The depletion of the ocean's resource was once assumed to be impossible. Historically deemed as infinite, our oceans have become a focus of concern. Most people are unaware or forget the natural history of the ocean. Without this knowledge, our baseline of what is natural continues to shift, accepting its current state as normal. This shifting baseline syndrome means that people have narrowed their perspectives and lowered their standards with regard to ocean health. Our accepted standard has moved far from a pristine state. Turtles were once so abundant throughout the Caribbean that one of Columbus's crew reported in 1494, So numerous that it seemed that the ships would run aground on them and were as if bathing in them. Lawmores of the sea, turtles are a vital component for coral reefs by grazing down macroalgae and bioeroding sponges. In addition, green turtles play an important role in forming a link in the nutrient cycle in the system. They move nutrients from the seagrass beds, where they feed during the day, to the coral reefs where they rest at night. The near absence of green turtles has allowed seagrass beds to grow longer blades that provide substrate for fungi to grow on. These fungi cause turtle grass wasting disease, which kills the grass. The resulting detritus provides fuel for heterotrophic microbial activity. This, in turn, promotes dead zones of depleting oxygen. A long list of pressures have contributed to their precipitous decline, including hunting, poaching of their eggs for consumption, land development of nesting sites, pollution, and drowning by fish line and nets. Now, all eight sea turtle species are either threatened or endangered. Like many other organisms, their numbers are so low that they are either regionally or functionally extinct. In other words, there are so few turtles that they play no functional role in the ecosystem. Land-based activity can have equally severe consequences for the ocean as for the land. Removal of natural buffers between land and sea, such as mangroves, allows the products of terrestrial erosion to wash straight into the marine habitats. In tropical marine environments, the coral animal is able to tolerate acute episodes of sedimentation by secreting mucus that keeps their surfaces clean. Yet the continual input of sedimentation contributed to logging, agriculture, and land development is lethal to corals. This form of pollution, in particular the fine silt fraction of the sediment of pollution, directly smothers coral reefs and blocks the sunlight needed for photosynthesis. The corals eventually die due to prolonged smothering. In addition, the silt covers the stable hard substrate that was available for settlement of juvenile corals, making recruitment of the propagules impossible. Global population estimates show that the number of people living within 100 kilometers of the ocean range from 20 million in the Middle East to 230 million in Southeast Asia. The correlation between human pressure on the coastal environments and coral reef decline is clear, yet the direct links remain unclear. One probable cause is an increase in coral disease. The observed increase in coral disease is playing a significant role in changing the coral reef ecosystems worldwide. For example, the Acropora corals have been one of the most important framework builders of the Caribbean reefs for the last half million years. The coral diseases, white band and white pox disease, have caused the regional decline of these ecologically important corals in the Caribbean. As a result, the Acroporas have gone through an unprecedented die-off in the last three decades. For instance, a remote atoll located 30 kilometers offshore from the coast of Belize, Central America, has experienced a 99% loss in its acropora species since the mid-70s. The increase in emerging diseases in marine organisms is real and widespread. Understanding how certain conditions promote diseases is critical in reducing these threats to the ecosystem. There is no such thing as a pristine coral reef left in the world. Continual stress eventually results in a phase shift, replacing coral coverage with macroalgae. Herbivorous fish and sea urchins are critical top-down controls that reduce the ability of algae to proliferate. Consequently, elimination of these important grazers allows the overgrowth of corals by algae. A comprehensive example of this deleterious effect is the experience learned from Jamaica. Massive human populations growth in the last 50 years resulted in fishing pressure that significantly reduced fish biomass in the area by up to 80%. The ecological effects of eliminating the herbivorous fish were not clearly understood throughout the 1970s as the corals appeared healthy. The reason was that the sea urchin Diadema antelarum increased dramatically with the absence of the fish and continued to keep the algal cover low. Suddenly, 
In the 1980s, this last remaining algal grazer experienced a mass mortality from a disease that had severe consequences. The virtual elimination of the reef's herbivores was a breaking point that allowed macroalgae to overgrow the remaining coral reef and replace the hard substrate necessary for coral larval recruits. The rapid decline of coral cover was matched with a quick increase in macroalgal cover. Reef surveys in 1993 showed the drastic reduction of coral cover from a mean of 52% in 1977 to just 3%. Population growth coupled with diminishing returns has created highly exploitative fishing practices and markets. As a result, resources that were once deemed worthless have become targeted. One of the greatest victims is the harvesting of sharks to fulfill entry food niches such as fish and chips and for the lucrative market of shark fins. This demand has led to much unchecked and illegal fishing of these critical predators of the sea. Frequently, finners will pass by a reef area and net as many sharks as possible, removing only the fins and tossing the mutilated carcasses overboard. The consistent harvesting of sharks has dramatically reduced their abundance and has left several species on the endangered species list. As apex predators, sharks are scientifically recognized as ecologically critical for maintaining marine ecosystems by culling fish communities of weak, old, and infirm individuals. Moreover, sharks and other apex predators significantly alter the flow of energy through the reef's ecosystem. In the absence of top predators, much of the production of a reef environment in the form of biomass is lost when fish die and are washed from the reef environment, often to the depths of the sea. Predators serve to keep the biomass within the reef environment, effectively making the fish community more efficient and more greedy. As shark populations decline due to overfishing and habitat loss, prey populations may increase, but the overall ecological efficiency and production of the system significantly declines, leading to an overall decline in ecosystem health. Once dubbed the poor man's protein, Fish stocks have diminished to such an extent that it is increasingly more difficult for fishermen to survive. As a result, fishing practices have become more desperate. Once considered the most biodiverse coral reefs in the world, Philippine reefs have experienced 80% loss due to destructive fishing practices using dynamite and poison. Ignited, bottles filled with the common fertilizer potassium nitrate explode to create an underwater shock wave that ruptures the swim bladders of nearby fish immobilizing them and causing them to float to the surface where they are easy to collect. The impact of the blast leaves the surrounding coral reef reduced to lifeless rubble. Another detrimental fishing technique to coral reefs is the use of poison, potassium cyanide, to temporarily paralyze and capture valuable reef fish for the aquarium and live fish restaurants. Again, nearby corals are killed by the toxins. In an attempt to help both fishermen and their environment, no-take marine reserves are being established in order to restore fish populations and reduce such destructive fishing practices. No-take marine reserves are a form of resource management that regulate human activity in order to conserve and protect local marine habitats by disallowing fishing practices in designated areas. Species are expected to increase in abundance and biomass inside the no-take zones and eventually influence surrounding areas. To be an effective management tool, no-take reserves must have the compliance of local fishing communities and regulation enforcement. Our ocean, once considered boundless, is starting to be seen as limited and interconnected by a complex web of feedbacks between its organisms and the land. Human activity continues to exhaust and threaten our ocean's health to ecological extinction, yet hope still remains. Most species still exist. An integral part of reconstructing the ocean's integrity is learning its history to allow the necessary dynamics. This requires the exploration of the past to appropriately take the necessary measures into tomorrow. The vitality of the ocean is not only critical to its resident organisms, but the millions of people that depend upon it for their livelihood. An accord between the two is possible.